Um, to remove the screws, you're going to need a Torx T8 security screwdriver. I will send you an eBay link in the description. You can get them for pretty cheap. The screws aren't too difficult. Uh, just give them a few twists like you would a normal screw and they should pop right out. If they don't, turn the controller over, give it a quick tap, and they'll pop it right out. You'll see me do that right here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what makes the Torx screw so special is they have this small little peg in them, and this, this uh, security driver has a hole in it, so the peg slides right in that hole and you can unscrew it. If it doesn't, the peg blocks the screwdriver from being able to go down inside of it, so you need a special screwdriver to do it. This was intended to keep the controller from being taken apart, but, you know, that obviously didn't work, so you can get anything online. So I'm almost done here, and then I will show you the motherboard of the controller. Always keep a little bowl, cup, or dish so that you can put your screws in there so you don't lose them. You're going to need those later because, you know, you don't want your controller to not have screws. You drop it and it's going to bust and buttons are going to go flying everywhere. Anyways, here we go. Last screw. To remove the back of the controller, you need to grip it by the bottom of the battery port and the top of the battery port and just pull very softly. It'll pop right out. You'll see the motherboard. This is the controller motherboard. Uh, I removed the rumble packs. You're going to want to. I keep mine removed, but you can put them right back in after you're done with the scuff mod. Uh, just put your thumb on the rim of the white connector so you don't rip it out and pull very loosely on the bow on the uh, rumble uh, motors uh, wire and they'll pop right out to remove the motherboard from the front of the controller just grab it by the um, controller charge port and the mic port and pull it right out you're going to want to remove your thumbsticks so you don't burn them with a soldering iron or scuff them up to do that just pull on them and there you go your controller should look just like mine right here next step so next up we're going to drill the holes for the buttons on the back there's only going to be two paddles in the back instead of four because the animal is a bit ridiculous it's kind of like using one of those mice with a bunch of buttons on it which i actually own and they're not so bad but a lot of people have trouble distinguishing the uh um paddles in the back and a lot of times when they're wanting to knife or jump they'll end up changing weapons or reloading so as you'll see me doing here you just put a piece of masking tape right over this little section here so you don't mark up your controller or anything and then you measure how high up you want your uh your button to be this really isn't going to matter too terribly much as long as you use the paddle you don't have to use the paddle but i think it makes it easier i don't know exactly how high i'm going up there i can't really see on my preview but you do that and then just get how far away it is from the uh, battery wall so you can make it very even if you are gonna um, do this specifically you need to make a, each side level so it looks and feels better but once you're like this you're gonna need a power drill uh, you're not seeing my hands here because i'm adjusting the bit on my drill it'll take me just one second and also i apologize if there's no background audio I had music going, and if I were to upload it to YouTube, it would get copyrighted. But anyways, just where your two lines meet, drill right in the center, straight through the masking tape, and the other side of the controller, just like that. Excuse me bumping the camera there. And once you're done, you don't have to worry about picking up shavings like I did. Just pull off the tape, and the shavings will come right off with it. And you have a very clean hole right there. No scratches, no sharpie marks, no nothing. And as you can see, there it goes. Alright, now we're going to make the top hole. Uh, I'm only showing you how to do one side because you just mimic it for the other side. It saves me a lot of time. It cut the video length in pretty much half. But for to make the top holes for your top two buttons, this is where the Y and X buttons go on my controller. You simply put a piece of masking tape right there. Um, grab your button. You'll see me do that in just one second. Make sure you get your masking tape good and fit on there like I'm doing, so you can see the contours of the controller. But get your button, place it in a very comfortable comfortable position for your finger. It should be about right in there somewhere. I'll get it right in a second. Once you have it where you want it, you're going to grab your Sharpie, 
and you're going to dot the ends of the two prongs, not the middle one. You're not grounding it. There's no reason to. So just mark the ends of those prongs. Move your button. And I would suggest marking right in front of where you marked because that's actually where the arms are going to be. I might do it here. I don't remember. Um, you can see me with my thumb. I'm kind of making a little bit of an indention in there. But you mark just right above them like I'm about to do. And that should be where the pegs actually uh, come off the button. And you need a very small drill bit. You don't need to use the one you use in the bottom. You need to change your drill bit to a very small, the smallest you can get. And once you have that done, put on your small drill bit and drill on that second pair of dots you made. Just a quick straight through, just like that. And one more time. And there you go. Remove the masking tape and you should be very good. Yep, that's all you gotta do. As you can see, it's clean straight through. That'll come in handy later. This part I sped up. It just shows you that under one side of the button, if you use a wireless controller, you're gonna have to shave off that little, I don't know what that is, support brace, I guess. But just, you know, do what I'm doing here with an X-Acto knife. And be careful, don't cut your hand open. I know someone out there probably will, so if you do, not my fault, don't blame me. Okay, so now let's make the paddles. I use the pocket clip off of these big market pins. It's a perfect paddle. It's got those little grip things there. Um, they feel really, really good on your hands while you're playing. That's why I use them. You need to line it up and figure out where you want to make your holes. Um, to get the pocket clip, all you have to do is take an X-Acto knife and chop the end of it off. Put it so that the grip it things are at the bottom. That's where your fingers will be. Um, I do warn you, I mess up several times right here. I don't make my screw holes straight right here, and it looks really ugly. And at the end, I'm uh, bending the the uh, pocket clip paddle to give it a little bit more uh, uh, leverage. Don't do that, because you'll see me break it later. But anyways, just follow what I'm doing on screen, which is making holes, sticking my screwdriver through it to make sure it's a good fit. Uh, then you line it up, and once you have it lined up, put your finger on it so it doesn't move. Grab your black sharpie, put a small dot, and a small dot. Now take your drill, and drill right into those two black dots. Use a relatively small drill bit. You're probably going to want to use the same one you used to make the top buttonholes. Uh, once you have that done, get yourself some screws and a screwdriver. Thread the screws through the hole. Don't screw them all the way. Just get a little bit of the end out right there. So you can slide it into the uh, drill holes. Once you have it done, just slide it in there. Make sure you feel it go, the two screws go into the screw holes. And once you're done, just screw it in. Don't screw it in all the way. And do not bend it like I'm doing here, because you'll break it. I fixed that with some hot glue. And now we're going to go on to soldering the button. These are your um, tactile switches. They're the long-armed ones. These are going to be for your paddles in the back. I have helping hands. You might want to use them if you're new to soldering. But they basically are just a little clip, as you can see here, that you stick your, uh, your, your button in. Grab your uh, wire strippers and some of your wire. Or maybe not. You need to put some solder on the end of the leads here, like I'm doing. Be careful, soldering irons fucking hurt. I mean, it's pretty common sense, but I'm gonna tell you anyways, because I've, I have personal experience. I have several burns on my hand from when I was learning how to solder, so be careful if you're new to it. Anyways, strip a little bit of the end of the wire off. That's actually way too much, but it doesn't really matter. Once you get it off, give it a little bit of a twist so the wire doesn't go anywhere. Get some more solder, and put a little bit of solder on the end of the wire, like I'm doing right here. Also, solder in very well ventilated areas, that smoke, it makes me cough, it's bad for you, just don't, 
don't breathe it in if you don't have to. Uh, straighten out your wire a little bit like I'm doing. It'll make it easier later. And now, just solder that wire straight to the point on the button, and you'll be good. And then I'm only going to show me doing one side, and we'll move right on to the next button. Okay, now we have the small buttons. These go up top. These are going to be your X and Y buttons. These are going to be the ones that uh, reload and change weapons. You don't have to like where I put the buttons. You can put these buttons virtually anywhere on the controller that you want to. So if you want to make an animal replica, you can. Just get two more market pins and two more uh, paddles. So you can have your buttons in the back. But I really prefer the buttons to be up here. Uh, I'll show you a picture so you know what it looks like but I love them there because you can hit them you have your fingers already there for the trigger and the bumpers so you can hit them very easily but just solder a wire to each one of the leads like I'm doing right here and you should be okay next up we're gonna position the buttons inside of the controller now these are your long arm buttons these are gonna go on the back through your drill holes I'll also put in the description exactly what size drill bit you need so that you can do this perfectly. Um, you're not going to want to cut a spot for the whole button to go out. It looks really ugly. It kind of gives in when you click on it. This way works so much better. Anyways, just stick your button through the hole, get your hot glue gun, and hot glue around the edges. And be sure not to hot glue your finger. I'm very close here. I think I actually got some on my finger, but it doesn't bother me too much because my hot glue gun is very, very, very weak. But just hot glue around the edges. That first go, I actually didn't get any on the button. It all stuck to the wire. So you'll see me kind of pressing down on it, trying to get it to go around it. Didn't really work out so well, but I, I put some more on it in a second. But just hot glue all around the button so it's nice and secure. The hot glue comes right off the controller, so don't worry about messing up your controller. I mean, you already screwed some holes into it, so what the hell is a little hot glue going to do? Anyways, as you can see here, all I'm doing is putting it around the edge, right under my thumb. Don't burn yourself. Hot glue fucking hurts in some of those hotter eye, uh, hotter guns. My bad. Uh, I'm just kind of cleaning it up there, with my cleaning it up with my finger right there. That's perfectly okay. You're gonna want to do this to both sides. Make sure it's good and secure. Once it's in there, give it a few test clicks. Make sure it's not going anywhere. I do it right here. You can hear the click until I remove the audio. Um, here in a second we'll get to the top buttons I'm just putting some extra all the way around it make sure that button's not going anywhere that's what you're going to want to do too make sure that button is not coming out whenever you have it in just click just like that you should get a very nice responsive click out of that okay next up we should be going up top here we are with our top buttons this is fairly easy just run each one of the wires through their respective holes just like that once you have them threaded inside grab them from the bottom and pull don't pull too fast or you'll rip out the wire just kind of give it a nice solid smooth tug like I'm doing feed it down in there more and there you go don't put it all the way against the controller just quite yet Hold it up a little bit, like I'm doing. I think I actually pushed it down all the way in a second. Or no, I don't. But next, you need to get your hot glue gun. Just put a little dot, like I'm doing right there. I put too much right there, actually. You'll see what I mean. Once you have it on there, uh, on the bottom of the button, might I say, press down from the top of the button against the uh, shoulder pad of the controller. I'm out of frame here, but... As you can see, once the hot glue dries, you'll be good right there. Make sure the button gives you a nice solid click. There's a little bit of hot glue coming out from under the button, because I use a little bit too big of a hot glue dab. So just be careful there. Okay, next up we're going to prep the trigger stops. Trigger stops are probably the single most helpful thing about a scuff controller. They also do not damage your actual controller shell in any way, just your triggers. They don't really damage it, but you know. Some people consider drilling screw holes into your um, controller case to be damaging. 
anyways you need to pop out your trigger like I just did it's very easy just it's really just you pull it out once you get your spring in your hand you need to pull it like I did give it some extra um, springiness now at the end you're gonna want to cut off a little bit like I'm doing here uh, I cut it down probably about eh, three four little springy things I don't know three or four coils this makes your trigger a lot lot less or a lot um, looser it will help your rapid fire better that combined with trigger stops make it almost unstoppable now to actually install the trigger stops you're gonna want to wrap your trigger in masking tape so you don't scuff it up or anything and you can see you just give it really really good around those contours like I'm doing then you're going to want to measure how far down you want your trigger stop to be. I put this one too far down so it doesn't squeeze the trigger enough. Um, if you don't know what trigger stops do, they basically block the trigger from going all the way inside the controller because games like Call of Duty don't use that to shoot. They only use a, the very, very tip of the uh, depression. You don't have to go all the way down. So they block you from going all the way down. Other games like Halo require you to use the full trigger depression. Uh, Minecraft does as well. So use a screw that you can take in and out of your controller. Anyways, once you make your dot, just drill through it like I just did. I would make it as centered as you can. After that, just hand thread the screw in there a little bit, and then grab your screwdriver and screw it the rest of the way in. And once you've done that, you'll have your trigger stops. Next up, I'm gonna be showing you how to put the trigger back in the controller. First, you're gonna wanna find that little slot on the side stick a screwdriver underneath that slot to keep the trigger arm raised. Don't put your spring there. I just did it so I wouldn't lose it. I tried to close the trigger on it to see if it would work, but it wouldn't. Um, you're going to want to thread the uh, spring inside the trigger. There's a little mount for it on both the controller board and the trigger, so you'll be okay. Right here, I'm going to show you how to solder the wires from the buttons you added earlier to the controller to make them actually work. First, you're going to want to remove some of this, I think they're called carbon contact points. It's so the um, little mushy button thing can read them. You don't have to remove all the carbon, just a little bit so you can uh, solder to it. I think they're carbon. If they're not, don't yell at me. I'm not fucking some god of electronics or anything. I'm just a hobbyist. Anyways, take an X-Acto knife and scrape them away like I just did until you get a little bit of silver. Then take your solder and solder directly to it. If you burn it, if you burn the board, don't worry about it. It should be okay unless you like burned a hole through it. But if you did that, then something's wrong with you. Uh, you're most likely going to burn it your first uh, try or two. If you do, just take your X-Acto knife and scrape away the black and it'll be just fine. So don't worry too much. Uh, then try to get a little bit of ball of solder on that uh, silver spot you scraped off and you'll be okay. Okay, now I'm going to show you where to solder the wires. This is the A button. So wherever you want your A button to be, take the wires. One of them is going to go to the middle contact point of the triggers. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. I'm threading the wire up and under the controller and inside that secondary hole right there, so it's out of the way. Um, anyways, I'm going to run this one to the actual contact point on the board for A. Now, when an electrical signal goes through this wire, it'll hit that A button and it'll tell it to jump. So, just put a little bit of dot of solder on it, let it go, and there you go. Now, take the other end of that wire and go to the middle of these three little points right here. This is where the trigger meets the, um, this is where the actual trigger part is. I know it's kind of confusing because it's down here, but solder it to the middle. To the two buttons on the other side of the controller, run one end to the um, left trigger um, posts in the middle. It'll work out better for you because you want so much crammed in here. I'm using an X-Acto knife here to uh, make sure I'm not soldering the two points together. You don't want to do that or your controller's not going to work. It's very simple. Just again, solder the second wire right there and there you go. When you press the button, it'll complete the circuit and the buttons will work. Now, do this for your other three buttons 
and your scuff controller will be complete. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Give me a dislike if you don't like it. Just tell me why you didn't like it. I hope you guys did like it, though. Um, this has been Ecstasy Ewok, and I will see you again.